everyone. Um, I thought I'd film a new woodworking project. Um, so I would like to make some more of these kind of pieces with um, a canvas stretched over a circular stretcher. Um, but I'm limited with what I can buy online in terms of stretchers. So these ones I buy for cheap, fairly cheap um, on Amazon. Um, set of three but they come with a prime canvas which I rip off so that's a bit of a waste um, and then they're not quite right because they don't have a slope so when you paint when you push against this bit on the canvas you get a mark um, so you need to have that slope like in in this one you can probably just see so it sits on a lip at the edge um, so yeah I used to like painting on wood because I could easily like this one just cut out a circular bit of wood and that's easy circle done. But when it comes to circular stretchers, um, that's not a common thing. Most of them are square and rectangles and also they have keys in the corners. So when, after a bit of time, when the canvas loosens, you can hit these keys in and it slightly pops out the corners to stretch the canvas a bit. But to be honest, I have never used keys. If it gets saggy, I can restretch it. So, um, you know, really fancy circular stretchers have like segments with keys in it so that you can pop out the circular ones, but that could get really pricey um, and probably mostly made in America. So they're very hard to get over here and they're very expensive. And also, um, so I had a look for more of these ones in bigger sizes, um, but maybe they're 10 centimeters bigger, um, but they're all pretty shaky reviews and they're just not really a thing. So I thought, you know, this is just a circular bit of MDF. I can probably make that from scratch because my partner's got like a nice big woodworking shed that I can nickel his tools from. Um, so I thought, why don't I just try and make them from scratch? Um, so I have bought myself a lovely big bit of MDF here. It's a little bit thicker, so I think this is 18 mil and the other one's about 15. Um, so I will just cut out the circle. Um, so what I thought I would do originally was use a jigsaw and roughly cut it out because it's, they're not super accurate and they often like like to just eat into bits. You're like, oh, no, I wanted that bit. Um, but then, oh yeah, so originally when I made, made, used to make these ones, I used to have a big wood workshop at uni and I would just roughly, oh no, I'd draw out a circle with a compass and then roughly cut it out, you know, with a little bit extra with a bandsaw and then use like a belt sander to just sort of eat up to the edge of the pencil line and that used to get, I could get pretty accurate circles that way. But uh, I don't have a lovely big belt sander or a, um, um, a bandsaw. Um, so I thought I could do a jigsaw then sand, but that's gonna take a long time. Um, and my partner said that I could probably do a similar idea that I've got with this pencil and the string to get the circle. You can do this, but with a router. So you can actually get a cutting tool that then will cut out this and then you can make like a wooden pivot so it does exactly the same thing as this and you get a nice circle like that um so yeah we'll see if that works out so the router is like a drill bit but then it cuts sideways so i can just cut a big old circle and then hopefully just be able to do the same thing on the inside and then get a few concentric um stretches out of this so i'm thinking i probably can get four out of this bit and then there's also the whole bottom bit where i can do it all over again but we'll do it um just this first time to begin with, just to make sure this is the right width. I've got it at about five centimeters. The other one's just about three or so. So I want to make sure it's big enough so that it's structurally sound. Um, and then in terms of that sloping bit, um, you know, with this, with these ones, I just hold out the material with a with um, a file sander because they're quite soft. Um, so that was quite easy. But then you don't. It's quite hard to get a real consistent edge and nice and neat. So this is the profile that I'm wanting to get. So this is obviously the edge, the back, and then we've got that little beading slope bit. So what I thought I might have to do is get another router bit that doesn't go all the way through and it's angled. And then I can just move the pivot in a little bit and then do that bit all the way around in a circle. And that would be a really nice quick way of getting that um, beaded bit, the bit that sticks out. And then I don't know whether I'll just hog out this material with the file sander because that doesn't have to be neat. It just has to be recessed. Or there might be other some router bits that I can use to get that bit. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of an experiment and you know, this will cost me 20 quid and I'm probably gonna get eight stretches out of this. 
so it saves a lot of money obviously it takes up more of my time but it's not something that I have easy access to be able to buy so um, yeah we'll try making it from scratch and um, yeah I want to do more paintings on the linen rather than wood because it's nice and absorbent I can get much smoother finishes um, there's a kind of grain to it so there's a limit to how detailed I can go and then you know all little bits of hairs and stuff like that that maybe become more I don't know if you can see but um, it gets a little bit of a lumpy texture on the top like all the paint sits on top of the wood and all the little you know little hairs with a fluff make little bumps in it and so it, it kind of just decreases the illusion a bit um, and it just doesn't feel as nice so um, but with the linen it kind of all gets absorbed into the linen structure and I just think it's a bit more professional and yeah it's just a bit better to, surface to paint on because it's nice and absorbent as well um, so yeah we're gonna have a go at that project and uh, fingers crossed pretty much ready to go and start making this um, stretcher um, we made this very very professional pivot um, I don't even know why I cut the corners off just makes it look scruffier <laughs> but um, we've got a nice routed uh, channel here that we can adjust the radius um, and then a little hole for the router to go through so that and then the routers um, screwed down to this bit of MDF so that will come through the hole and then cut this um, then we've got this bolt holding it down so we've got a washer in between so that we can go like this and it will just do that thing with a string where it maintains the circle um, and then haven't got a washer in between this and the table so that this doesn't move um, but I might clamp it as well and then and one underneath with the bolt uh, to secure it to the table um, and then a bit off centre so that we've got good clearance for the drill to go down here without hitting this and then I can just undo it and rotate it round when I want to do some more of it um, but yeah I did a little test piece and that went pretty well so this is it you know no sanding no extra finishing needed that's just as it comes super neat and then you can see this channel that I've been having a few little goes with using this router piece so we can get that um, slope here um, I don't think I can hog all out this material with the router I think I'll just use a hand sand, uh, file sander but that's fine that's not too hard and don't have to be neat so it's just about resetting this material but that shouldn't be too much of a faff um, so yeah I just experimented with different depths and different distances from the edge um, to see you know how precise I can get because I think this is maybe just under five millimeters and that's pretty small if you know something goes wrong and it goes whoop then I've ruined it um, but yeah it seems seems pretty um, precise and neat so yeah let's have a go at doing the real thing So that went okay, um, it was a bit more tricky than expected, the sample went so smoothly I thought I was going to have no hiccups but I discovered that um, we might have seen me pause a few times when I got to these corn these sort of edge bits, um, so when the router went through material that wasn't you know wider than the router as in you know it was making a little channel here but as soon as it had a little bit of a gap one side and was just cutting through a couple millimetres it like jumped and like spun out, chewed up the wood a bit and flung the bit out um, and like you can see I've got a couple little bits like that around um, so in the future I think I should just, you know I wanted to maximise the material really um, but it'll be better just to cut a few mil in just so that I've got a you know a continuous bit that it's cutting through on both sides of the, of the cutter because um, the, the, these bits went absolutely fine it was just these bits and then I think it kicked out this a little bit and so we've got a couple bits that are like um, yeah there, there's bits maybe when I first went through but there you know this is quite a big circle so um, I think I'll just take a, a sander to that bit 
and just smooth it out and I don't think that it will be noticeable at the scale it's at so I think I'm not going to go round it a little bit smaller because I'm worried you know I might have the same problem I had on these bits um, so I think I'll leave it as it is but right let's go make the channel went fairly well a bit more smoothly than the outside cut because it was all the same the whole way around um, you can see here my first little attempts so this hole's gone way too deep at least it hasn't gone all the way through and um, also like seeing how far along I can get it to get you know I want this to be sort of quite slim but you know you get too close and then you know think if things go wrong then that's ruined you know if, if this profile dips this way then that will um, spoil it um, but yeah it's a bit more fiddly getting the right depth on this thing because it's a bit stiff um, so like on the sample one I could start off the edge and push it through and then get a height lock it in and then just pull it across but this one I just had to kind of go in blind pull it up a bit is that okay and then also I had to modify the router a bit so when I push down really far and then want to lock that um, in like that it was getting hit getting caught on this bit here um, slight design flaw but I fixed it just by getting the wire cutters and just snipping a little bit of it off so I fixed that um, there's also something about you know the complete accuracy of the setup like this channel here is a bit wider than the bolt here so there's a bit of give this way but I was hoping that because you know the whole drilled through this and the table is 8mm which is the same as the bolt that should hold the accuracy but um, like this bit here is a bit thinner than this side over here but it's it's um, not far off so pretty good and I mean I'm gonna you know smooth these edges over with a bit of sandpaper anyway so I don't think that's a big deal anyway um, and that might be to do with you know the, the inconsistencies on the outside might have something to do with that because you can see how much difference that makes when you have such a small amount of material this thickness to this thickness um, but um, it's big enough that I think sanding smoothing it out and then you won't be able to tell um, so next step is to get the um, the long router back bit back in the router and cut out the inside um, I was thinking maybe routing out this bit this bit of material with the router but um, the router is just a little bit of a faff and a bit more dangerous so um, this hasn't got to be neat so I'll just hold that out with a file sander pretty easily um, but yeah we'll just cut out this line and then we're almost done with this yeah I could do some more do some concentric ones but I think we'll just stick with one today since uh, it's a bit of been a bit of learning process and taken a bit longer than I thought it might but it's fine um, it's it's um, investing in the in sort of being able to do this in the future um, and doing it quicker because I think this is going to be a pretty neat way of getting circular stretchers custom made and making them myself for pretty cheap so yeah um, next step cutting out this bit bit went quite smoothly um, now I have um, you know the next one's already got its outside cut done and it's a lot neater than this one the only issue is the end point here obviously because of this like flipped and then you know or like it doesn't cut you know it cuts up to almost through and then there's not enough holding it to keep it still so next time I think I'd have to and you need to clamp this down I think that was my mistake I'd have to sh I should have um clamped it either side so that when I finished it it didn't want to move um, but that's not the end of the world I can just sand a little bit out and the inside of this doesn't matter since you're not going to see it um, but other than that that's got a perfect edge so that makes it a lot easier for next time makes one less job for the next slightly smaller stretcher um, so yeah just going to take this off and and then file sand 
this stuff away. So we are done. Um, that last time lapse I think cut out about halfway through because my battery died. I didn't think, um, I wasn't expecting it to take so long. <laughs> um, yeah, I think next time I need to figure out a more efficient way of hogging out this material because with a file sander, um, you know, after I, so this bit here you can see is a bit more lumpy where I was trying to figure out how to get a good angle on it. And then um, I kind of figured out an angle that I could get it all at and then work my way around. But um, definitely not the most efficient and not the most comfortable on my back and my hand. Um, so maybe there's a way I could figure out with the router to do that bit. But um, that will be an experiment for next time. But at least this one is is done now. Um, I've um, So I fire sanded out this bit and then I've just gone around with a bit of hand sanding um, just to smooth out that little ridge. I kind of went as deep as that V route a bit went and then sloped off a little bit that way. Um, so just smoothed it out with some hand sanding, took the, you know, rounded off the edges and um, smoothed that a little bit of some of these lumps on the outsides, but I think it looks pretty good. I've got this little bit of deep hole there, but that's not gonna be seen anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, and yeah, just got a, next step would be um, stretching the linen over it and priming it and fingers crossed that you know I've taken out some of the width but hopefully there's still um, enough structure in it to you know so it doesn't warp or anything but I'm I'm thinking it would be fine um, so next step right now is cleaning up all this mess because it's turned into a bit of an MDF beach in here with all the dust that I've made um, I did try and set up the hoover to hoover up some of this mess and um, you can actually fit something in here, attach this to this somehow, but this didn't fit. And then there's an there's a, there's adapter, but that didn't fit either. So um, just gave up with that and just figured out, oh, I'll just um, clean it up now, clean up these layers of dust. But yes, quite a lot of MDF dust, MDF dust but you know, I wore my respirator and we've got air filtrator, but it's not the best for you, but luckily I don't do this too often. Um, but anyway, you don't want to see that bit. I'll see you with the priming. I've stretched it up now. Um, the only thing I'm noticing is a slight um, wobble on this flat surface that I didn't have before. So something's getting slightly warped. I don't know if it's from the tension I pulled more and went in the other way when I was um, stretching the linen. It's not too bad and when I put it this way around, you know, because there's all these roughly bits when it's this way around, I don't think it's super obvious, but it's definitely got a bit of a, a bit of movement to it. It's not completely flat, um, but I'm hoping that what's going to happen when I prime this side is this shrinks and becomes very tight, and maybe that will um, sort of pull back this way. Maybe I had to pull tighten too much this way and then this is going to tighten it this way. I don't know. It's a bit of an experiment. Um, maybe next time I need to do this bit wider to stop it warping more. I guess when you get this kind of size, maybe I should even put in crossbar supports. That would be another thing I could do. Um, like, you, you know, when things of that size get some um, crossbars in the back. So maybe that is something that I need to look at as well. Um, but just got to keep going with this one and hopefully it's okay. So, 
bad news, it's gotten worse. It's warped quite a lot. If I can push it down, it bends backwards. I don't know if there's too much tension going this way, what's happening. So um, it's still wet. I've primed it, but it's just gotten worse. So um, I'm going to probably undo it, see if the frame itself, the wood, um, unwarps when it's unstretched and maybe I can just stretch it a bit less tightly um, and maybe if that doesn't work I can try and put a cross in it and maybe that will help but yes more complicated and more of a faff than I was hoping so good news is that it has gone completely flat again there is no movement in there at all. Oh, a little bit that way maybe. But pretty much gone. Um, so it's definitely is the tension in this stretching, especially using these pliers because you, you lever it to get quite a tight um, skin with the linen. So um, I think I might just use my hands and as much force I can get in my hands to um, and restaple it and then if it starts warping again um, I will take it out and put in some crossbars but um, so I'll take it slow and sort of pay attention to it as I go around with the staples and if it does start to warp again I'll immediately have to stop but I'm hoping that I can save some work for myself and just um, just do, don't do it so tense and it won't um, warp this, but it's just, you know, lesson learned for next time. Um, so let's see how it goes. Right, so I've stretched it, just hand stretched, so it's a lot um, less tight on the front, but you know, as long as it doesn't look saggy, it doesn't really matter, as long as it doesn't press in touch the... Um, you know, sag and so I paint against this bit, then it's not a problem. But you can see how much, um, you know, how much tension has been taken out on the, whether the tape has now been pulled around to the front. <laughs> so yeah, I need to take this bit off and um, re-tape it up and just paint over the edges. Um, got a bit of warping there, but that's probably just where, like, you know, that's painted and dried and this isn't. Hopefully that gets smoothed out. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, it's not got any movement now, really. Tiny, tiny bit, maybe that way. But maybe that's just from the damage from how much it got warped. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a, a problem. All right. development this is not nearly tight enough now that it's dried no when it was wet when I did the last coat this was nice and tight but um yeah when it's dried you can see it's pretty baggy so this is not tight enough to paint on um so I'm going to have a go at taking these out again and then restretching it with the with the pliers to get a bit more tension on it because finger tight is obviously not tight enough um hopefully now that it's had a couple layers, the difference between wet and dry won't be as big, so hopefully um, it won't warp it. But if it does warp when it's wet, I might just leave it until it's dry and see if that then it settles down. Um, because, you know, it didn't, it's gone completely flat now after that big warp in the middle, so it hasn't damaged the wood. So it's nice and flat now. Um, so yeah, we'll do it a little bit tighter so that I know that it will be tight enough when it's dry and then do another layer of, of gesso um, if it warps a bit I will just leave it to dry and then see what happens once it's dry and then we'll decide what we're going to do with it
Titchy bit, but I don't think there's any warping now, and it is plenty tight enough to paint on. Um, I think next time I might try doing this a bit wider. Maybe this is five centimeters, so maybe try more like eight just to make sure I don't get any warp in it. Um, because I could do cross beams, but that's just another decent step. So if I can avoid doing that, I will. So maybe just a little bit wider will help strengthen it. Um, I have got a little bit of a line. I don't know if you can see here from where the first I first stretched it and primed it um, and that was over the, the corner and then as I slackened it off a bit um, it's come around the front so we've got a little bit of a line um, but I've done some more layers over the top of it, been about four layers of gesso um, so at the moment you can see it but um, I think once I paint over it um, it will pretty much disappear and we've got a little bit more coming around the edge than I'd like because I tightened it a little bit more but you know not not the worst um, I'll just make sure that when I paint I continue the painting around the edges a little bit just so that we get rid of the white um, so when it when I peel off the tape we'll have the nice linen and then it will go straight to painting I don't want a white edge um, kind of kills the sort of neatness a little bit because um, I don't frame them. I don't know. I don't know how to frame them. I mean, I think circular frames will be horrendously expensive. Um, but yeah, they look kind of neat anyway with a nice clean edge. And then yeah, there's a little bit, you know, this linen at the back is a little bit ruffled. So even if there's a, is a little tiny bit of warp, when it sits on the wall, it's not going to be completely flat against the wall. So I think, um, I think it will look, you know, to anybody else that isn't me, it will look absolutely fine. Um, but for next time, we know some improvements to make, um, you know, wider and um, probably use a router to get the get out the material um, in this bit here, just for efficiency's sake. I think I figured out how to do that. Um, but yeah, for a first attempt of making a circular stretcher from scratch, I will call this a success. And so next video, I'm actually going to start painting on this. So i um, quite excited. This is the biggest circle that I will have done. So quite looking forward to starting a new piece.